Now, when I sat down at my bench tonight, I didn't really have any idea what I was going to tie. So I just grabbed a book that I hadn't looked at for a while, found Dave Hughes Essential Trout Flies, found a pretty cool pattern in it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I came up with today was from Dave Hughes' section on all fur wet flies. He calls it his all fur swimmer. Now, Dave Hughes needs no introduction. We've talked about him lots of times on this channel. He's a master fly tire, a great author on fishing and fly tying, and pretty much a modern legend in our sport. Now, about his all fur wet flies, he does attribute a lot of these that he designed to Polly Roseboro, um, what he called his fuzzy nymphs. So are these wet flies or are they nymphs? Well, it really depends on how you fish it. Polly called them nymphs, but he also tied them pretty big and fished them as streamers. Dave Hughes kind of calls them wet flies. In fact, I think he coined the term all fur wet flies. So this pattern today, Dave Hughes all fur swimmer, it's not a tough pattern. It's really pretty cool looking. It only uses one material, basically. Squirrel for the tail, and then more squirrel dubbing for the body, and then a little bit more squirrel for the, the fur collar. Now there is one technique that a beginner might not have done before, and it's taking squirrel fur, putting it in a dubbing loop, and then spinning it into a brush. So it can be a little tricky, but it's not that hard. And after you've done it a couple times, you'll get the hang of it. So it's a pretty cool pattern. Tie it small as a nymph, tie it bigger as a wet fly or streamer. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, one of Dave Hughes' all fur wet flies. This one he calls his all fur swimmer. Now that one was a size 10. I think it's just a little bit big for anything I would be fishing. So I'm tying this on a 12 right here. And brown thread, it's a size 12 1X long hook. And I'm using brown and a 70 denier. I'll take a base down to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this guy, it's just pine squirrel. And I'm gonna use this pine squirrel from a, uh, from a zonker strip that's dyed olive. Cause this is what I'm gonna put for the collar. So just, you'll take a big, pretty good sized chunk of it. I like that right there. Cut it off my strip here and then tie it in. Check my length before I really lock it down. I think that's good. We can live with that. Go ahead and bury this. And don't worry about uh, having a lump right there. We're putting a pretty fat body on this. The body is more squirrel. And I'm not using that uh, pine squirrel zonker strip this time. I'm just using some of my straight up squirrel dubbing. This is actually a, a squirrel and just mixed in with a little bit of olive synthetic to give it a little hint of olive. But use whatever squirrel dubbing you have, whatever's a pretty buggy mix. And I'm gonna put it on here fairly tight and Take my body right on up behind the eye. Okay, that's a pretty buggy body, but that's exactly what I want. Okay, now this is the only advanced, I would say, technique uh, or whatever is, you know, the slightest bit tricky, is we're going to put this fur in a dubbing loop and spin it as a brush. So what I'll do here, and since this is a, a pretty small fly, I'm going to take about an inch of this zonker strip, just cut off one inch of it, and then I'm going to put it in my uh, dubbing loop, and then I will cut off the hide. So. Let's go ahead and, and make the dubbing loop with our finger. And I'll, I'll pull about four inches off and then capture that in right there. Okay, see that? I've got about a four inch loop right there. And I'm gonna put this right up between it. Well, let's put a little wax on it. A little wax will help hold it just on one side's fine. Now put this right on up in between it, and then we're gonna, you know, pull it. Oh, let it pull tight. See, grab, I've got my little 
brass spinner right here with the hook on one end. So I'll put that in it and just try to try to line it up and we can adjust it after you get it pinched if you need to. So I've got about half of it in right there. And let's see, this zonker strip's got a little bit of bend to it, so that isn't making it easy. But okay, and let me pull that up and see if you can see that. See my zonker strip is caught in between the two threads. And you'll want to just cut off this, you know, the little strip of, of skin right there. Just do it carefully so it doesn't come out of your, you know, your dubbing loop. Okay, now before we spin it, we're gonna to try to line it up in there. Whoops, I'm hitting my thread, or hitting my bobbin hanging down. So let me show you what I'm talking about right here. Okay, kinda, of, I'm trying to pull it up where you can see it, uh, but okay, you can see it a little bit right there. And I've got it, that's right about in the middle. If you want to cheat a little bit, just have the, the tips of the fur a little bit longer than the under fur. And I'm gonna put it, push it close up there to where I'm gonna wrap, that way I won't have too much uh, bare thread before I start wrapping. So I'm just going to pull my bobbin out of the way and hang this thing, my spinner down, and I'm gonna give it a spin and let it spin 30 or 40 times till I get a nice big thick brush. So there's my my brush. You see that? And it's pretty thick. None of those fibers are going to come out. And what I'll do here, I'll take it out of my dub and spinner, just use some of these spring-loaded hackle pliers. And now I'm going to spin this. Uh, wrap it around just like I would a, a feathered hackle and two maybe three wraps depending on what size fly you're tying So that's really the first full wrap right there You might need to you know spin it again if it starts unspinning on you. That's two full wraps. Is that gonna be enough? And I think we can go one more. So let's go one more and see what that's gonna do for us. Okay, I think uh, that's going to work right there. So let's catch off this little, our little hair dubbing brush with a couple of thread wraps. And then go ahead and snip this off. And that is what we've got so far, but we're not done. I'll lick my fingers, pull this back, and then build my head. So take it right back to the eye and build a little ramp up. You don't have to go too far back, just enough to get you a good whip finish. Let's go ahead and do that. Four or five turns, gonna be fine right here. And we'll be one more step here in just a second. Okay. I usually, and you probably don't necessarily have to, but I'll take my brush and then just try to brush any of these loose fibers out, any of the under fur that might have gotten trapped. I'll just brush that out right there. And that's really it. I mean, it's not a hard tie, it just takes a little practice. Now, you saw the trouble I had getting that squirrel fur in that dubbing noodle, but you know, it's it's a pretty cool pattern, and after you've done a few of them, it's not too difficult. So, well, that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.